So you may or may not know this, but uh, starting this week... I didn't know this. Um, Josh didn't know this. Uh, starting this week, the Polish government is conducting a census, a census where we count everybody. Uh, it's done every 10 years, last one, of course, in 2011. The census is a very, very big deal. Uh, the government uh, takes basically a snapshot of the country, lots of demographic information in addition to the obvious things like how many people are here. This It's broken down in ways that you can't even imagine. Uh, male, female, old, young, city, urban, and that's the same thing, city, rural. <laughs> um, uh, how many people live in a household, the workforce participation, uh, how often you've moved inside the country over the last few years, and all, tons and tons when and tons of stuff. was the last time you knocked one out? <laughs> tons and tons of stuff. And uh, Dr. Mike is going to tell us about some of the practical problems that the census, census seems to be having in getting started. With the first, Let's start with the most obvious one, Dr. Mike. Um, a lot of people don't even know this is happening, but we're supposed to be answering some questions online. Yes, I mean, it's actually by Polish law, it's compulsory. So anybody residing in Poland during this time is supposed to do it. Uh, and it starts uh, April 1st, not an April Fool's joke, but it starts April 1st. So just a few days from when we're recording this. And this does involve as well uh, foreigners who are residing in Poland right now. I was a little annoyed because I went to the website and they already have like a demo version of the census available. So you can you know, log in and, and fill it out. And you have the little like language selector area, but that's grayed out, so it's only in Polish. I had really hoped to see how they uh, wrote this up in English. But yes, everybody in Poland who's in Poland on March 31st, because that's the day that you'll be supposed to uh, base your answers on, uh, is supposed to fill this information Let out. Let me just give the website very quickly. It's spis, S-P-I-S dot gov dot P-L. That's where you're supposed to go to complete uh, the census information, spis dot gov dot P-L. Um, I've been looking at this, Dr. Mike, and I got, I got my doubts about this. I got my doubts about how accurate and how much organization, how, how efficient the whole thing is, really. Because I found the results from the 2011 census, the previous census. And among many, many, many other interesting little bits of uh, information was the fact that the 2011 census counted 4,000 Vietnamese people in Poland, <laughs> which is off by a, a factor of at least 10, maybe 15 um, how can they get this wrong when everybody knows there are about 50,000 Vietnamese in the country? If, if not more. I mean, yeah. I, I have my theories about this. First of all, maybe a lot of the Vietnamese people didn't take the census. Seems that way. It, uh, or they, uh, they already consider themselves Polish because it actually asks you about your nationality and your ethnicity, not just your citizenship. And a lot of these people have, have lived here for a long time. They might have been born here and they consider themselves Polish but, or they but, just skip that but question. But it, it asks you about your ethnicity, which is how we get Kashubian and Shlonsk people and Lemko well, actually, and no, stuff those like are that. off the list. I mean, Shlonsk is off the list. The Salesians have really argued about that, that they want their ethnic group to be recognized. Oh, well, they're no longer a distinct they're people? they're not recognized that way either by Poland or even by the EU. Ooh, harsh. But you can still write it in. You can write in basically anything if you don't like the list of which na uh, nationality, uh, ethnicity you belong to. Yeah, is there a fondness for Jedi like there is in English sense? Uh, they <laughs> had that as a write-in for religion. They do? Uh, yes. People oh. wrote that in last time. and I Oh, I see. It's not there as a it's kind of a... Option. The option, option are, you know, the boring, you know, Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Mormon. Lying spaghetti monster, yeah. yeah. Or non-religious... Non, uh, yeah, but you can write in what you want, and Jedi was apparently one of the biggest write-ins last time. You around. know, we could joke about it though, but actually, the census. In fact, I have to, I have to be the, the boring, serious guy here. The census is an extremely uh, important um, bit of information for the government, uh, the statistics that it generates, because it helps to inform decisions about spending. Right? I mean, we're talking billions and billions of zlotys here will be directed or redirected to one region or another, one city or another based on the information that they find out in the census. Well, for me, one of the shocking things, whenever when I went over the census or whenever I think about a census, it's like, you guys don't know this about me already. You have my like address, my tax information, you know, the bills I'm paying. I would assume that this all this information is more than enough for you to gather this the kind of details that apparently the well, census is collecting. That's true. But then there are other questions like, um, I don't know, how long have you lived at your current address? How many people live with you? Uh, how many people, again, workforce participation, things that are maybe hard to tease out from the raw data, and you have to just ask people you know, they directly. Also, they also, for instance, ask about disabilities. And in Poland, you know, just according to Zeus and the government, apparently, you know, close to 20% of the workforce has some kind of disability here. So they're actually going to ask people, you know, uh, do you have any type of ailment or disability that prevents you from functioning fully in society? Uh, if so, what? Uh, and as, as well, is this, official, uh, is this disability or ailment uh, 
officially recognized by the state as well? And if so, what degree, what level? So there, you know, things I would have thought they already knew, they know how many people are getting disability payments. They're still going to be asking questions about that. Well, you're well. right about a lot of the stuff is obvious, you know, name, birth date, uh, your, I don't know, PESL, tax ID information. I mean, they, they do know this. It's, re- it's recorded in a million places already. Uh, yeah, fair enough. But I'm curious about one thing. Um, you know, not everybody's going to go online. I mean, I think about, you know, especially the older generation, unable or unwilling to log on. Surely there must be like an old school door to door component of this thing as well. And they will be doing it. They are training volunteers and people to collect this information, but that will be specifically for those who are otherwise unable to uh, fill out these. (laughs) You have to go online and say that you're unable to go online. How do they know that? I couldn't figure out as well. So I'm assuming, you know, people in hospitals or living in nursing homes, uh, you know, they'll send uh, volunteers there to collect this information. Or if they have, you know, older people on the rolls, on the records, you know, living at certain addresses, they'll go door to door and knock. But... Otherwise, you know, for the next three months, they'll be just collecting this information online. Uh, you know, suddenly I think I understand why they only counted 4,000 Vietnamese last time. I, I, I don't trust this methodology at all. I mean, in fact, again, it's old school, but I mean, I don't see what can beat the door-to-door method. I mean, asking everybody to go online, I mean, is, you're asking for, you know, just massive discrepancies between the, the data you're going to get and the, the, the real world actual, you know, I mean, facts. I understand that like in the United States, they do a lot more door-to-door. I mean, they find like, they choose like random census areas. And but then shouldn't they... it be easier here with the, you know, the population density? Shouldn't it be much easier to conduct a door-to-door You would think uh, so, yes, census? but I just don't think they have the same amount of funding and resources they do in other countries for it. So, you know, doing it online is a lot cheaper and you have the information right away. It's like, you know, if you do it door to door, people are filling out the circles in the wrong way. You know, what did he write here, et cetera. But when it's done online, printed electronically, you know, <laughs> you, get kind of, you do it wrong, the computer says like, no, go back, go back and do and that do again. again. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You could apply the same logic to, you know, again, older people using the internet. I mean, the, you know, they're either not going to do it at all, they're going to do it incorrectly. I just don't trust the numbers that we're talking about here at all. I'll uh, definitely have, I'm assuming that when they do get this information, they have experts and statistic- statisticians who, even when the data isn't accurate, they're able to, from it, withdraw information and uh, conclusions that are accurate. You know, that they're able to see changes in the population over time, growth in one or the other. And, you know, no, knowing that even this data isn't specifically accurate, but then they'll see uh, the, what the general picture is. Like you said, the snapshot of society in Poland at this time. The data, this kind of data is handled by a government agency that has the unfortunate uh, acronym of GUS, uh, G-U-S, Gouverneur uh, Urgent Statistichna, I think it's called. And uh, this, this, a no, they do what they want. <laughs> this information is actually, uh, you know, they, they make back some of the money they spend on this. The, 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 you know, it's enormous cost, of course, conducting a census. But the government makes back at least part of it by selling the information to private interests. You know, it's important to remember that, um, you know, as incompetent as any government is and as wasteful and inaccurate as, as their operations are, uh, this is very inf- useful information for investors. You know, only the government is capable of collecting, you know, the information on this scale. And so, you know, w- when you see, for example, when you see a fast food restaurant or a gas station or a shopping mall, you know, that investment was made on the basis of demographic, extensive demographic data, exactly, you know, the, the, of, of the type that's being collected now through the census. Explains you know, why there's so many Vietnamese restaurants. People, <laughs> maybe. I mean, uh, you know, how many people live in a certain area, what their average income is, you know, the growth know rate and things like this. People has uh, moved into a given area. Exactly. People, they know like, oh, and these people will have kids in the next three, four yes. years. So it's a good chance that we'll yeah, So this, these, these kinds of investments are not done on, you know, on somebody's, you know, gut feeling about the future. No, no, no. It's done on hard data. And this, the data comes from, among other places, the census. And so, um, you know, that's why it's, you know, it's extremely important but can i uh, uh, yeah. that interrupt, can make a point because i think there's also something that that often gets overlooked in the whole idea of um you know it's like mike was saying dr mike was saying earlier about uh, hey you know like a lot of this stuff is already known about me and everything You're like well yes that's true but that's known within government departments the great thing about a national census in many countries that do this is that it's a it's a kind of um it's kind of a sandboxed thing because the information, the data that's being sold as a consequence of it is, is anonymous data. It's things like distributions of population um, and varieties within populations. But there is no, you know, there are no, there are no names, there are no you know, identified details of the people involved. It is, it is raw um, chunks of numbers, which is very, very useful, as you say, for industry and stuff like that. But it doesn't have any 
kind of identifying characteristics about the individuals who have contributed to it. And I think that that's a very important factor in, in supposedly that kind of contract of trust between a government and its uh, citizens. And uh, one more thing that I think the a census probably is a little more beneficial than other informa- ways of gathering information is that it's done specifically at one moment, one time. It's like when you collect tax information, employment information, that's, you know, that part, end of the year, this year, et cetera, you move twice, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so se- the same person can be in different databases, but counted at different moments in his life. And that can make things complicated. Here, we're getting as much information as we can at a specifically the same moment in time, uh, hopefully preventing, you know, too many errors for being put into the uh, algorithms later on. No, I've got the questions here for the current census, and I don't have the previous census to compare it to, so I can't be sure. And by the way, the current census is, is 11 pages. The questions are 11 pages, but anyway. They say it'll take less than 15 minutes. because a Yeah, lot right. Of these, yeah. Anyway, I've noticed that, again, nothing to compare it to uh, from the previous sentence, but my gut feeling is that there are a lot of new questions that are specifically kind of centered around the idea of where you're from, because there are a lot more foreign people and foreign citizens living here now than there were a decade ago. And the government is against trying to collect information about, you know, where you're from, how many of these things, uh, things like that. And so there are quite a few, quite a number of uh, questions on that topic. Um, Which part of Ukraine are you from? Yeah, which part of Ukraine are you from, basically? uh, And there's also one question that is phrased kind of in a non-offensive, delicate way, when we're asking about marital status, the choices are uh, uh, single, of course, uh, married, widower or widow, uh, divorced. And the last question is, uh, do you have an informal relationship with another person? You know, if you know what I mean, wink, wink. And so I'm curious about the politics behind this, Uh, you know, how... How, how, why it's included, what information they're trying to kind of oh, well, gain I, from no, this. I, John, I think, that that, I, I think that that's actually a very, very smart move because, I mean, for as long as the, the government officially is not really that approving of the idea of same-sex relationships being legitimised uh, within civil society, but nevertheless it's forced to accept that this is a piece of information in terms of the population as a whole, that it's very, very useful to know. This is a, this is a, I think this is a very ingenious, um, should we say, fudge. I mean, I think they might be able to get that kind of information out of the census here as well, but I think that question there is more about, you know, in Poland, the traditional cultural accepted, like, relationship status for a long time was, like, you lived separately when you are single. When you lived with somebody, you were married. So the idea of unmarried couples living together is also something that's pretty new for the last 20, 10, 20 years. So they want to like figure out how many people are living together. And John, you were talking about how many, they also want to find out how many foreigners are in Poland. That's definitely part of it. But in Poland, something else has changed in the last generation is internal migration. It was a time when, you know, right. you lived, worked, and died more or less in the same place Absolutely. you lived. Absolutely. And that has completely changed. And now, you know, their census information from previous census is just not accurate in that sense because people have started to become more mobile. They, they you know, they study, they're born in one city, they move to Krakow to study, and they go to Warsaw to work, or, you know, a combination of that. Right. And they're more likely to have more jobs now. Back in the day, you know, uh, a Polish person, if they had more than two or three jobs in their whole weird. career, that was weird. You were doing something they wrong. They got one job and they held on to it forever. Basically. And yes. in Poland, you know, it's still less than in the United States, where I think it's like seven or eight jobs is the average. Uh, it's still less than that uh, here in Poland, but it's changing. And this kind of census, where they'll gather that kind of information, you know, are you working in your career? Have you had the same job for the last two years? Have you lived in the same place the last two years? If no, where have you lived? How often have you moved? Those are some of those new questions that can really give an insight into how the society has changed. I just found a question about education levels, which is one of the expected standard you know, kind of things you, you, you would see on a census report. Uh, the highest one is at least a doctoral degree, at least. And then all the way at the bottom, about 10 or 12 levels below that is... <laughs> if you can't read this, I, put I, an I X I, here. I shouldn't laugh. I don't want to make fun of anybody. But the, 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 the opposite choice is no school education. Now, I don't know what adult, I mean, what are the circumstances where you would answer no education? Well, they have to put that there because that's always a possibility, I guess. Just, But, you know, in a, in a country of, we don't know how many million, but maybe they will now, uh, there's that possibility that somebody, you know, for health reasons didn't go to school, et cetera, and, you know, still going to be counted. Uh, maybe they did have an education, but never formally finished it. So they never got the degree. So they can't say that they even have like the basic eight years of education, which, you know, is legally compulsory here. You're supposed to go to school. 
uh, but you know, maybe they never completed. You know, they just kept failing, failing, failing until they hit 18 and, you know, then they didn't have to go to school anymore. Or maybe you're someone from another country which doesn't have education. Exactly, as well. There's all kind of Listen yeah. to this. Uh, another question you would expect is about religious practices, right? <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, here's the question. Uh, it, it's, it's put in the first person. The question is phrased like this. I belong to, you know, which of the following denominations? Your first choice, guess, which, guess what the first choice is? Um, the Church of the Flying the Roman Monster. Catholic Church. <laughs> Roman Catholic Church. The next choice, Orthodox Church. After that, Jehovah's Witness. After that, Evangelical. I don't know what that means. After that, Greek Catholic Church. Pentecostal Church. Old Catholic Mara, 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 Maria Vite <laughs> Church. I don't know what that is. Um, after that, it's I don't belong to any religion. It seems like they missed a couple of religions there, but uh, I don't belong to any religion. I don't want to answer Lutheran that in there as well. And that's I'm... it. So your your choices are Catholicism, a couple of variations of Christianity, or other. Yeah, well, isn't that going to be right? Yeah, yeah. and I think well, uh, my my I think fairly realistic assumption would be that the order of those is probably predicated on whatever the results from the previous census were. Though I am surprised that you know uh, that, like, say, uh, Muslim or Jewish is not on there, even though those numbers are tiny in Poland. Uh, there have well, been so is Pentecostal for yeah, God's sake. I mean. That's I'm surprised, but you know. Uh, uh, Oh, I t- do you know what, though? This I think not the final version, so maybe they might have added it in. I mean, evangelical is a big deal. Well, look, you can see, I mean, if, if we can assume that the order is approximately, you know, the degree, or the, you know, of popularity or, or prevalence of each of those denominations, then what is it? Seventh-day Adventist is the one that comes after Orthodox. Mm-hmm. So it's like the, Jehovah's Witnesses. Or Jehovah's Witnesses, Witnesses rather. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, which in, 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 in most countries is very, very much a minority. Um, and so, the, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses are, are ahead of the evangelicals and Pentecostals, um, which in the UK, for example, and definitely in the United States, are big movements within the, uh, the Christian church. Usual questions about your economic activity, how recently you worked, uh, descriptions of your living situation, how big is your apartment, what kind of amenities do you have in your apartment, who lives with you. Uh, again, religious things, educational you get things. Water from a well. Uh, <laughs> that's there. <laughs> water supply. Water from Buy your well. magazines from the top shelf. Um, what else am I looking? Oh yeah, lots of questions about disabilities, Doctor Mike. Lots of questions about disabilities. What kind of disability you have? Uh, how your activities are limited by the disability? And yeah, moving within Poland. Have you resided at another address in the last year? In the last five years, et cetera, et cetera. Marital status we covered. Nationality. Lots and lots of stuff. Well. Spies, S-P-I-S dot gov dot P-L is the address once again, uh, starting April 1st, uh, until when, Dr. Mike? It's three months. For three, oh, plenty of time. Plenty of time. They might even get an English language version out there. Yeah. <laughs> Go online and check it out. If there's not an English language version now, there should be at some point in the future, who knows when. And uh, make your voice heard and tell them how much education you have. Hopefully you have more than none. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, a lot of these questions have the option, I don't know, or I don't want to say. Yeah, just yeah, just do that for the whole thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. The end. Thanks for listening, everybody. Go fill out your census report, and uh, we'll catch you next time on The Crackcast. 